DRY is an acronym for Don't Repeat Yourself. It originally comes from the book The Pragmatic Programmer. While it's commonly associated with code, the authors actually intended DRY to refer to knowledge in your software in general. And knowledge can take many forms. It could be your code, but it could also be something like your comments, your documentation, or data models. Knowledge in software is inherently going to change over time. You're going to have new requirements that come in. You're going to have new features that you need to implement. And the more places that knowledge exists, the more places you're going to have to update. As knowledge gets duplicated, it also starts to independently evolve, which starts leading to contradictions in your software and an unmaintainable mess. This leads us to the core idea of dry. Any knowledge that you have, you want a single, authoritative representation in your system. Let's take a look at some practical examples. The first situation is pretty straightforward. You've got a function, and in that function, you've got a little bit of duplicated logic. In this case, say it's parsing some strings into numbers from a query parameter. What you can do is you can take that logic into a common function and have everybody call into it. Now, you can also apply this at a macro level. Say, for example, that you've noticed that you have billing logic in three different parts of your system. And the billing logic happens to be pretty tricky because there's a lot of payment processing involved. What you could do is pull that out into a single reusable library so you're encapsulating that knowledge in a single place. I do think dry is a good principle to follow because with it, you're going to get less duplicated code and an easier to maintain code base. That said, there are a few trade-offs I think you should be aware of. First, you're going to be introducing layers of indirection to your code. Now to understand some code, you have to both understand it as well as the shared functions that you're calling into. Second, you have the potential to be introducing additional layers of abstraction to your code base. So let's say that you create a common library to solve a problem. That common library has to be generic enough to work for all the different situations in your code base where you're going to use it. And often this can require you to create new data models and new interfaces that work in all those different situations. Third, you're going to introduce a degree of coupling to your system because now you're introducing a new dependency across your code base. I think the benefits of dry usually outweigh these trade-offs, but I also think it's important to just not blindly apply the principle. Principles like dry, they're guidelines, they're heuristics, they're rules of thumb that usually will get you to the right answer as a shortcut. But if you just blindly apply them into every situation without understanding their intent and their trade-offs, you have the potential to misapply them. So let's take a look at a few ways that you could potentially misapply dry. The first situation is drying too soon leading to hasty abstraction. So in this situation, you make something common before you truly understand the problem. And so what you end up creating is not really reusable. So as an example, let's say that you're the first person to work on billing for your software. And so you decide that you're gonna take what you've built and make it a reusable library so it can be used in the future. The problem is you haven't seen billing enough to know what those situations are. And so you can end up building something that is not reusable. So this comes up so often that there are actually acronyms to counter dry in these situations. The first is WET, short for write everything twice, or AHA, which is short for avoid hasty abstractions. You might have also heard of something called the rule of three, which was the idea that you should wait until you've written something the third time before refactoring and making it common, because it's only at that point that you've truly understood the problem. Now again, keep in mind what I said earlier about rules of thumb and heuristics and not blindly following them, because it applies to these two. The second situation is forcing dry. So this is a case where if you take different parts of your code base and you squint and kind of look at them funny, they're maybe kind of sort of similar. And so what you decide to do is refactor them out into something common and shared. The problem is they weren't really the same. And now you've just kind of tangled two unrelated pieces of knowledge together and made it harder to understand what's happening. The last situation is mistaking duplicate code for duplicate knowledge. This is a situation where code happens to look similar, but it really is encapsulating different knowledge. So for example, let's say that we have logic to validate whether a user can upgrade. Another one of whether a user can get a discount. Today, 
the code may look the same. But it is likely that that is going to diverge in the future because they represent two different pieces of knowledge. So to recap, DRY is an acronym for don't repeat yourself. The core idea is to make your system more maintainable by making sure that every piece of knowledge has a single authoritative representation. It does have trade-offs like indirection and abstraction and coupling, but in most cases these trade-offs are worth it. That said, DRY, like other rules and principles, should not be followed blindly or you have the potential to misapply them. And one of those situations that you should look out for is drawing too soon, leading to hasty abstraction. As always, I hope this was useful. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider liking and subscribing. And with that, I'll catch you next time.